Hi, in this video we're going to look at some problems involving polynomials, uh, specifically those intended to help grades 11 and 12 prepare for the kangaroo math contest. So let's jump right into it. For the first question, we're told the graphic on the right is a piece of the graph of the function f of x equals to a multiplied by x cubed plus b multiplied by x squared plus c multiplied by x plus d. And we're told that it passes through the points minus 1, 0, 0, 2, and 1, 0. We're asked to find the value of b. I highly encourage you to pause the video at this point and try this problem out for yourself. Only after you've given it a good on a shot, then come back, press play, and check your answer with mine. Well, what can we do with this information? We know that the points pass through the line defined by the function, and that means when we plug in the first coordinate for the x value and the second coordinate for the f of x, that is the y value, uh, we should have the left and right hand sides of this equation being equal. So first we'll plug in minus one zero. So the zero goes on the left hand side and we plug in the minus one where each of the x's are. So we get a multiplied by minus one cubed plus b multiplied by minus one squared plus c multiplied by minus one plus d. Uh, and of course this just works out to minus a plus b minus c plus d. Plugging in the second point on the left hand side we actually get a 2 and uh, notice that if we're going to plug 0 in for x well each of these terms involving x is going to vanish it'll just be multiplied by 0 and we're simply left with d equals 2 and thus our equation uh, up above that we had just determined uh, actually simplifies somewhat it becomes 0 equal to minus a plus b minus c plus 2. Finally, plugging in the point 1, 0, again, we have a 0 on the left-hand side. And in each of these cases, any power of 1 is still just 1. So this just becomes a plus b plus c plus d, but we know d is equal to 2. Now, if I were to add this equation to this other equation here, that means I add the left-hand sides, put them together on the left-hand side, and add the right-hand sides and put them together. Well, on the left, we have 0 plus 0 is just equal to 0. And then on the right, we have negative a plus positive a that cancels out to 0. I have b plus b, so that will be 2b. And I have minus c plus c. So again, those will cancel out. And finally, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. So we get that 0 is equal to 2b plus 4. In other words, minus 4 is equal to 2b, which is another way to say that b is equal to minus 2. Thus, our answer for this question is b minus 2. For the second question, we're asked how many real numbers a does the quadratic equation x squared plus ax plus 2007 equal to zero have two integer roots? Again, I highly encourage you to pause the video right now, try this question for yourself, and then come back and compare it with my solution. So recall that if I have uh, two roots for this polynomial, say uh, m and n, then this polynomial should factor as x minus m and x minus n. So if I multiply this out, uh, we would have x squared minus m plus n times x plus m times n. Now, if I try and match coefficients on both sides of this equation, uh, we find that a has to be equal to minus m plus n, and 2007 has to be equal to m times n. So if I have distinct integer roots, then we can see from this second of the equations that their product has to be 2007. So that really limits our cases. We should only look at factors m and n, which multiply to give us 2007. So the first thing to do is just completely factorize 2007. 
Uh, first, notice that the sum of its digits is equal to 9, which is divisible by 3, so we know that 2007 is divisible by 3. So after performing some long division, you should get that 2007 is equal to 3 times 669. And well, we've got a bunch of 6s and 9s here, so perhaps that's divisible by 3. And if you check again, doing long division, we find that this, in fact, is 3 times 223. And then after doing a little bit of work, uh, trying out a number of different divisors, uh, you should come to the conclusion that 223 is in fact prime. So that means that all the possible factorizations of 2007 are given by, well, of course we can write this as 1 times 2007. Uh, we could also write uh, 3 times 223. Uh, in other words, this is 3 multiplied by 669, or we could multiply the two 3s together first for our value of m and multiply that uh, by 223, so that would be 9 times 223. And that's it. There's no other way to arrange 3, 3, and 223 into two distinct factors. So these are all our possibilities for factoring 2007. But notice as well, for any one of these factorizations, uh, if both terms were made negative, the negatives would cancel out, and we would still multiply together to get a positive. So for each one of these pairs, what values of a do we get out? Because for this question, we want to know which distinct real values of a we get out. So we have either the positive or the negative of 1 plus 2007, so that is plus or minus 2008. We have plus or minus 2 plus 669, which is plus or minus 672. And we have plus or minus 9 plus 223, which is plus or minus 232. So in total, we have 2, 4, 6 distinct solutions for A, and thus our answer is C. For a final question, we're shown these five graphs and we're asked to determine which one of these corresponds to the set of solutions for the equation x minus the absolute value of x squared plus y minus the absolute value of y squared equal to four. As always, the way to get the most out of this video is to pause it right now and give this problem a try on your own before looking at my solution. So remember that the absolute value always takes a number and makes it positive. A little bit more formally, uh, this says that if x is greater than or equal to zero, it will just return x. Uh, and if x is less than zero, it will return minus x. Let's look at the easiest case first. If y and x are both greater than or equal to zero, then the absolute value of x is simply equal to x. So this becomes x minus x, which is zero, and the same thing for y. So the left-hand side would be zero, and the right-hand side would be four. Clearly that's impossible, and so we can't have any solutions when both x and y are positive. So right away then, we know that b cannot be a solution since it has solutions with x and y both positive and neither can C be one of the solutions. Okay, well, what if it was the case that X and Y were both in the negative? Well, then our equation would become X minus negative X squared plus Y minus negative Y all squared equal to four. So the negative of a negative is a positive and this would become two X all of that squared plus 2y squared equal to 4, which gives us 4x squared plus 4y squared equal to 4. And finally, dividing both sides of this equation by 1, we obtain the formula x squared plus y squared equal to 1. And hopefully you recognize this. This is actually the equation of the unit circle. That is the circle centered at the origin of radius one. 
So we should know that in the lower component, uh, it should look like a circle of radius one. So certainly for A, it looks like that's what's going on. It intersects at, at minus one on the x-axis, minus one on the y-axis, and it's definitely curved. Uh, for D, it is a circle as well. However, we can see that the radius is two, so it can't possibly be D. And for E, it's a straight line. So we're only left with one option. The answer has to be A. Just a quick note on this question. It's entirely possible that we could have just looked at X and Y first, and that alone would have been enough data to tell us that it is A. So it's possible we could have gotten lucky and just checked these conditions first, uh, but I think it was natural to start with this, and I still wanted to explore the problem-solving process with you. Anyways, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for your attention. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can always contact mathkangaroo.ca or shoot an email to info at mathkangaroocanada.com.